that movie nut here with a review for Wyatt Earp, the 1994 Western biopic starring Kevin Costner, Dennis Quaid, and Gene Hackman. The film follows the life story of famous lawman and Western icon Wyatt Earp from his youth to his days as a lawman and ultimately to the famous gun battle at the OK Corral. We see the various events of his life, such as the relationships with his various wives, his first appointment as a law official, the events at Dodge City, the famous battle at the OK Corral, and subsequently the aftermath of OK Corral. The acting all around is a mixed bag. Now, obviously, because he's the star, Kevin Costner must go first. Frankly, his performance was average at best. He didn't deliver a god-awful performance, but there were a number of times here where he seemed to either be phoning it in or seem bored out of his mind. He plays the character as a little too subdued, a little too calm at points, and at other points he just bursts out and does things that don't seem quite right or all there or fit with the character that we've seen thus far. And when he's playing young Wyatt especially, he has some of the worst chemistry with the actress who plays the first wife, and it's only a few notches away from being Twilight level. Of course, the Special mention has to go to Dennis Quaid, who plays Doc Holliday, and he did a terrific job, though his material was limited in this film, and he did not appear as often as he should have. Every time he's on screen, he has a little mannerism or nuance that just makes him very enjoyable to watch. A great example is when, in Dodge City, a bunch of cowboys shoot up a saloon, and while everyone is ducking, Doc continues to play cards. And despite Costner's problems, he works well enough with him. Gene Hackman has very limited screen time as Wyatt's father, and though he pulls off the fatherly role well, his dialogue is less than inspired. But we'll get to that when we talk about the script. And the rest of the cast is filled with notable players such as Bill Pullman, Adam Baldwin, and Michael Madsen, who, despite delivering good performances, never get much to do or say, and ultimately leave little to no impact on the viewer and become lost in the epic storyline that the film is trying to convey. And speaking of epicness, the cinematography in this film is gorgeous. The beautiful panoramic shots of the open west are a thing of beauty, and the design itself looks absolutely authentic to the period. The costumes look great, the sets look incredible and full of detail. And the score by James Newton Howard is not a shy off either, and is on par with Bruce Broughton, who coincidentally enough scored Tombstone, which was this film's immediate rival. Howard's score is big, it's orchestral, there's loads of brass and woodwind, and it just complements the film incredibly and really enhances the feel of the world. And while not necessarily adding a romantic feel, it helps give it that classic Western quality and fits every scene in the film to a T. Of course, the key thing, as always, is the script, and frankly, this is where the film really falls apart. The problem with the film is that it just never fully achieves what it sets out to do. And this has nothing to do with it being three hours long. I like long films. I mean, I'm the same person who really enjoyed Gettysburg, which is four hours. But the difference between that and some other three-hour movies like Schindler's List and Gandhi compared to Wyatt Earp is there you got time to really be invested in the characters and care about what was happening. With Wyatt Earp, though, there's no such thing. Here, most of the characters, though they serve key events in Wyatt's life, they're almost unimportant, which sounds very strange, but it's nothing to do with the actors, it's to do with the writing. The writing here just isn't very strong. Most of the characters deliver exposition and don't talk like real people. And it does and this is especially true with Gene Hackman's character. Every time he's on screen for all of the 10-15 minutes he gets at the beginning, he's delivering some kind of moral speech that is meant to set up Wyatt's later morality, but it's just so unnatural. I'm sorry, but even in the 19th century, this is not how people talked. This is something that feels like it came out of a history book, and it really hurts the film because it takes that bit of believability out, which is something crucial considering that this film set out to try and be the true story of Wired Up and try and strip away all the myth and legend surrounding him. And the romance between Wyatt and his first wife is especially dreadful. And even though I said the actors didn't do a very good job, you could get Laurence Olivier and Meryl Streep to try and do this and it wouldn't be any better. It's just delivered in such a hokey fashion and it's blunt but not in the good sense. It's blunt as in a high school student wrote this. 
It's flat. It doesn't sound natural. They talk like they're reading off of a script. It doesn't sound right. No one talks like this when they're dating. And as I said, the characters don't get enough to do here. The film is so focused on Wyatt that it forgets that these other characters play crucial events in his life. I mean, as the film itself says throughout, family is important, but Wyatt's brothers don't ever get much to do or say apart from exposition. And this really hurts the film because it's so intent on establishing the humanity of Wyatt, but it just keeps on delivering exposition and doesn't give these characters little moments to show off. And of course, with Doc Holliday, as I said, he never gets enough to do. And don't say to me, well, they're trying to be historically accurate. First off, historical accuracy does not a good film make. And second of all, no, this film definitely changes details around. So that's already another point knocked off the whole we're trying to tell the true story of Wyatt Earp deal. Thing is, with characters, you have to be invested in them. You have to get to know them in order to really care about them. And this film never does that. The film is trying to be epic in scope with the music and the cinematography, but the storyline doesn't work. As I said, look at Gandhi, another epic biopic. There you got to know about the characters, not just Gandhi himself, but the people who influenced him and the people he would influence in turn. But here, that's not the case. Everyone is just given little to nothing to work with. Is the film being 100% historically accurate as it would like to think it is? No. Is it as epic as it thinks it is? No. Is it as endearing as it thinks it is? No. I'm sorry, but as I've said, visuals can only carry a film so far, and in this case, they just can't carry it enough. When you're trying to tell the true story of a famous icon like Wyatt Earp, you need to give us his humanity and look at the man behind the myth. But here, there are points where it's more about the myth than the man. And the gunfight at the OK Corral itself is a complete joke. It's shot from the wrong angles, it's edited poorly, and aside from the piece of music from Howard, it fails to create any real tension or intrigue in the scene, and the corral itself, the fight, is absolutely minuscule and, and almost thrown away. I mean, it's in an alley. I'm sorry, but that doesn't seem like the OK Corral. To me, that looks like just some cheap little back street. And they're standing really close together. They're only like a couple of inches apart from each other. And once again, that's something I find a little hard to swallow and it takes away from the scene. And so I must give Wyatt Earp a bronze star. While far from a bad film, as I said, the visuals and the music are great. This is the textbook definition of a mixed bag. For everything that's good here, there's something that's bad. It's got great cinematography, but a weak story. It's got great music, but it's got hokey dialogue. It's got incredible attention to detail, but it's not particularly accurate, nor do the characters ever get enough to say or do. It's far from a terrible film, and it's certainly not the water world of westerns that it sometimes gets blasted as, but frankly, if you're an average moviegoer, you're better off with Tombstone.